Hey friends, welcome to the 5-Minute Bible Study. In this particular Bible study, we're going to look at what I believe to be one of the most common misunderstandings in the book of Romans. It has to do with Romans chapter 7. And by the time we're done with this video, you will know definitely how not to use Romans chapter 7 and hopefully how to use Romans chapter 7 a little bit better. So welcome to the 5-Minute Bible Study. My name is John Whitaker. I release videos every Thursday just going through a text of Scripture and trying to connect that to your life because I believe Bible teaching ought to be blue jeans theology. That is theology for everyday life. And if that sounds like something that would be helpful to you, then just go ahead and click the subscribe button right now so you never miss an episode. All right, let's jump into Romans chapter 7. You know, when I was a fairly young Christian, a fairly new Bible college student even, I had just kind of the very typical common understanding of Romans 7. I looked at Romans 7 as describing the normal Christian life. The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. And I just assumed that's just the way the Christian life is going to be lived. And I think many people just read Romans 7 that way. And now I believe that's one of the biggest misunderstandings in the book of Romans. And here's how I came to that conclusion. I came to that conclusion by reading the context. In fact, if you look at last week's video where we looked at Romans chapter 6, that was the start of it for me. Romans 6 says, you used to be slaves to sin. You've been set free from sin. But just listen to this one verse in Romans chapter 7. Verse 14 says, I'm of the flesh sold into bondage to sin. Well, how does that fit with being set free from the bondage to sin in Romans chapter 6? And as I started to notice the inconsistency, I thought, I need to go back to the drawing board and read this text again and make sure I really hear what Paul is saying, not what I want Paul to be saying or not what I think Paul is saying. So I went back and I read the passage again. And one of the first things that jumped out at me is the major question that Paul is asking and answering in this section of Romans chapter 7. Paul is asking a question about the Old Testament law. The section begins this way, verse 12, or verse 13, excuse me, says, Therefore, did that which is good become a cause of death for me? Well, what does he mean by that which is good? Well, read the preceding verses and you'll see it's the law, specifically the Old Testament law. The law, he says, is not bad. It's holy and righteous and good in verse 12. But then he says this in verse 13, did that which is good, did the law become a cause of death for me? That's the question he's answering in this whole section about the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do. In other words, what the Apostle Paul's talking about is he's talking about the typical Jewish experience under the law and apart from the Holy Spirit. Before the Messiah, without the gift of the Spirit, uh, Jews who loved God and who loved God's law wanted to obey it. They wanted to keep it, but they failed to. All right, well, why does he talk about that in the, the present tense if that was describing his past life? And I think he does that just for dramatic effect. It's not uncommon for us when we tell stories or when we're trying to make an impact to use the present tense for dramatic effect. But the question clearly is about the Old Testament law. And he's describing um, a typical Jew's experience to the law, which was good and taught the right way to go. It just couldn't make you the right kind of person. And so when he says the things I want to do, I, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I end up doing, he's saying that's what it was like living under the law. But hey, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, we still struggle with sin, don't we? Well, yeah, of course, we do. It's just our struggle is a different kind of struggle and needs to be framed up a different way. We're not in bondage to sin anymore. you got to check out last week's video if you haven't watched it. We've been set free from sin, Paul says, just a paragraph or two before this. So we're no longer slaves to sin. We're not sold into bondage to sin. Sin's no longer our boss. It's no longer our slave masters. We don't take orders from it. So, yes, we still struggle with sin, but it's a struggle that we can have increasing victory over by the power of God's Spirit through the victory that Jesus won over the flesh. Just keep reading into Romans 8, and Paul makes that powerfully clear in Romans 8, 1 through 4. And so here's the thing. We live in a world that has fallen. The devil is still alive and well. We're still in the same fallen body. And so, yes, we are weak and we will still struggle, but it's a struggle that we can increasingly win by the power of God's Spirit. So 
What should you definitely not do with Romans chapter 7? Well, here's what you definitely should not do, because I've heard this actually quite a bit when talking with you know, followers of Jesus who are maybe struggling with a particular sin. You should say, well, you know, I've read Romans 7, and I guess if the Apostle Paul, you know, for his whole Christian life just had sins he couldn't defeat and he was kind of you know, powerless against, I guess that's just going to be my life too. No, that's not how to use Romans 7. That's not Paul's point. Paul never believed he was powerless in the face of sin now that he had the gift of the Spirit. What Romans 7 should do, the way we should use it is, Romans chapter 7 should drive us to Jesus. Uh, Romans chapter 7 should drive us to the Spirit. Romans chapter 7 should make us realize we can't be holy and righteous by trying to keep the law. We can only be holy and righteous by walking by the Spirit. And so the The conclusion that Paul offers in Romans chapter 7 is this. He says right at the end in verse 24, Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this body of death? Who will set me free from this struggle with sin? Thanks be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Jesus and the Spirit has given us new power to live a holy life. And so we're not in bondage to sin. And we can obey God. And we can be holy by the power of the Spirit. And yes, we'll still sin and we will still struggle. And when we do, we simply thank thank God for the grace he's given us in Jesus, that there is no condemnation for us. And we invite the Spirit to renew and strengthen us so that we can be pure and holy again. All right, thanks for checking out this study of Romans chapter 7. I pray that it was helpful to you to understand Paul's point there. And I'm going to link up the video to Romans chapter 6 up here just so that you can go back and watch that if you didn't see it already. If this kind of Bible teaching looks like it's something that's helpful to you, then man, go ahead and click the subscribe button right now. And if you want more of this, I also have a podcast that I release every Tuesday, and I'll link that in the notes below as well. All right, God bless you guys. We'll see you next week on the 5-Minute Bible Study.